Hi, I'm uh, Desmond Fisher. I'm a youth with Hopsy, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, we will begin this event by Youth for Youth by acknowledging that we are meeting on indigenous land that has been inhabited by indigenous people since time immemorial. Furthermore, we acknowledge that we are within the traditional territory of the, of the Ishnabe, Ishnabe, Anishinaabe of the Fort William First Nation, one of the historical signatories of the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850. We offer our humblest gratitude and thankfulness to the Anishinaabe people of the Fort William First Nation for allowing us to conduct, conduct this event today. We recognize and affirm the contributions of the Métis and Inuit peoples, as well as any other indigenous peoples who have made both in shaping and strengthening this community and to help rebuild our relationships with the indigenous people across Canada. Jimmy Bitch. Jimmy Bitch, Desmond, really appreciate you getting us started there um, in a good way. And it's great to see the Thunder uh, Bay North, our Hopsy North team, uh, as we call it. Um, my name is Sean Kidd, and I am broadcasting from uh, Mississaugas of the Credit Wendat and Haudenosaunee uh, territories and territories that fall under Treaty 13 and the land I'm on is land that people would have passed for many generations going to and from Toronto uh, from the, the Credit River. Um, I am a clinical psychologist by training and I do a lot of my work in the area of community mental health and this work here today, um, I'm so excited about. This is fundamentally led through partnerships and through youth leadership initiative and creativity and um, and it grows out of some intervention work that uh, collaborators and myself have worked on uh, to help young people transition from homelessness into housing and have success there and I can say the the work was here that we're going to be talking about today here was funded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada and I'm now going to do what I really need to do is get out of the way and let um, and, and facilitate uh, the leads here um, talking about the incredible work that was done. And I'm just gonna pass it on to my colleague, Marty Daly, who was involved from the very beginning in, in terms of the by youth for youth concept. And then we will launch into presentations about the great work that happened uh, in Thunder Bay and then in Managua. And then we'll have a chance at the end for um, some questions and comments from the audience. So thanks very much for joining and really looking forward to people's thoughts on what we share today. Thank you, Sean. Hi, everyone. My name is Marty Daly. I'm calling in today from Toronto, and I'm going to speak a bit about the housing outreach project and how that led to the Buy Youth for Youth project. The original BiFi or Buy Youth for Youth project began as a spin-off of the Housing Outreach Project a few years ago in 2016 and 2017. Initially, the peer team in Hopsi wanted to create a sort of survival guide for young people who had been recently housed. We began with this question of, what would I have wanted to know five years ago? And realized that homelessness is not a linear path and people often cycle back and forth between stages. Before we could put our heads together and figure out how to bring this product to life, the other peers left the project and we, the Hop C team, had to go back to the drawing board. When BiFi emerged, we were just past the halfway point of our project. And because our engagement was optional, it was important to give the participants a reason to want to engage with us. Research participants usually don't have a say in the direction of projects, However, in BiFi projects, they definitely do. We recruited about six or seven participants, some of whom I'd never met before, uh, to engage with us in a sort of summer job. We paid them for their time and their ideas over about six weeks, and then we engaged in a designer to bring the ideas to life. In the end, the young people decided to build a bullet style journal called the My Guide to support youth who had just been housed. They included recipes, coping skills, writing prompts, and other activities, all of which were handpicked by them. One of the reasons it was successful was that it gave young people a chance to meet folks outside of their regular communities. It took place in a setting outside of the shelter and housing systems, and it allowed them to see themselves reflected in something grounded in their lived experience and expertise. 
As you'll hear today, similar projects were done in the North and South with great outcomes that addressed niche needs in each community. These projects were modeled on youth experience, skill building and leadership development with the core understanding that young people know what young people need. So now I'll pass it on to our BiFi team South from Nicaragua. Thanks so much. Hi team. Um, hola, yo soy Maria Castillo. Yo soy la representante o oh, bueno, soy la persona encargada de proyectos de Casa Alianza Nicaragua. Y tengo el gusto de presentarle a mi colega Giovanni López, tal vez nos saluda Giovanni. Eh, él ha sido el coordinador de, este, de esta iniciativa aquí en Nicaragua y vamos a estarle presentando más adelante un video de rap que se hizo con jóvenes con los que trabajamos en este proyecto. Gracias. Hola, mi nombre es Giovanni López. ¿Sí? Trabajo para Casa Alianza Nicaragua desde el área de calle, desde hace más de 10 años. Mi función es el abordaje con niños, niñas, adolescentes en situación de calle y consumo de sustancias. Mi objetivo es llevarle el mensaje a estos chicos que están en el consumo y brindar eh, Casa Alianza como una estrategia para que ellos puedan pasar un proceso de cambio. Ok, perfecto. Luego contaremos más acerca del proceso y continuamos con el equipo de Thunder Bay. My name is Blue Raven Woman. I'm from the Eagle Clan and my given name is Tiffany. Um, I'm the Youth Prevention Service Coordinator um, that took over after Huguette, and uh, yeah, so that's my role. Hi, I'm Pauline Drake. I'm the Youth Coordinator for the Hopsy program, and I'm so proud of this uh, project for the Bayou youth for Youth. So welcome. Miigwech. Uju. My name is Gloria Wesley, Woman of the South is my spirit name, and I'm the cultural wellness mentor for Hopsi North, and I come from Miss Navi Cree First Nation and the Bear Clan. I am beyond proud of the hard work and dedication our youth peer leads have put forth in the By Youth for Youth Guide. I am super grateful to have had the opportunity to be a part of this project. So I say chi miigwech. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my name is uh, Little Black Spruce. Um, I come from the community of the Lakdamalak First Nation in the territory of Treaty 3, and I'm Anishinaabe. I come from the clan of the White Bear, and my government name is Tyler. Um, I was really, I was recently brought up to speed on uh, the work and the tremendous effort that's been made by everybody for this project. And um, I'm just very honored to be here today and to be a part of it. So, Jimmy Gooch, everybody. Hello, hello. Is this when you want us to talk about the Hopsi North project? Sure. Yeah, sure. Why not? We could start with Hop C North maybe and then uh, and then go south if that works. <laughs> so Buju, um so what kind of wanna, what I wanted to talk about in the beginning is just a little bit of the cover work that was done um, for this for the project itself. Um, I'm just going to pull up the sheet that has the actual cover on it. I believe it is right here. So this by youth and for youth uh, cover. Um, I don't know how well everyone can see that there. That's the cover that we decided to use. So a little bit of, uh, behind the cover itself. Um, this was uh, created by uh, an, ex an excellent artist by the name of Desiree Tuito, who uh, was the one that created the design. Bethany, Bethany. Oh, Bethany? Yeah. Bethany. 
in it. I apologize. <laughs> And um, just a little bit behind it is that the sweetgrass braid represents the importance of having a safe space for Anishinaabe youth, eliminating any negative energy and only inviting kindness into our circles. The, the braid represents us as a community and how strong we can be working together rather than individually. The medicine wheel hides in the back but serves as a gentle reminder for us to live by our sacred teachings and how we must honor ourselves by taking care of our emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well being. The hand symbolizes how life-saving it can be to reach out and ask for help when we are struggling. Desiree Tuihido, our peer coordinator, has a great sense of wisdom and courage, making her the first person to reach out and lend a hand. Her help comes from a place of shared resiliency and love for others. The sage that rests behind the hands represents our cultural lead, Skylar Patayash, who is always the first to our staff, first to start our circles off with smudge, cleansing us of energies we no longer need to carry. Skylar is a reminder to remind our, is a reminder, uh, sorry, Skylar is a reminder to humble ourselves and to walk forward in truth. We honor ourselves best by doing so. The little stars in the background represent how our ancestors are always with us, watching over us, protecting us, and guiding us in our life, guiding us forward in our lives. Uh, Bethany Kustachin, our peer art lead, firmly believes this and wishes to remind us, us one thing, we are our ancestors' prayers in flesh everything they fought for and hoped we would become, we are. We should view ourselves as divine, sacred beings and deserving of love because we have, because we have been and always will be. A little bit, uh, I just want to touch on a little bit about our uh, artists and the contributors that uh, helped, make this helped make this possible today. Um, first is uh, Skylar Pateash or, or Gekabo. Um, turnaround of his turnaround of Wayagamo First Nation. He's a 23 year old male and the cultural youth peer leader for By Youth for Youth. He's originally originally couch surfing. He is now housed and working to self independence. He's working on his high school credit with uh, WAH with Wasa at Distance Education, and has a former student and is a, was a former student of Dennis, and, uh, Dennis Franklin Cromarty. His work with the BiFi North Project has built upon his cultural slash professional life and has developed his artistic abilities. This is our second, one of our second contributors, Bethany Kustachin. Um, she is a young two-spirit Anishinaabe living in Thunder Bay, Ontario. They spent she spent her their they spent their life in the child welfare system, which sparked deep desire to ensure the healing of similar youth who were forced into vulnerability and shamed for it. They are working to help and protect these youths. They are the self-taught art. They are a self-taught artist from Treaty Nine, working as a peer mentor with the RMYC and BiFi to ensure the safety of our future generation. Our third contributor is Desiree Tuido. She is a 22-year-old Indigenous woman from Long Lake 58 First Nation. And she has recently graduated from the Child and Youth Care Program at Confederation College. She now plans on continuing her education at Lakehead University in the new year. Desiree has a deep desire to create change within our community for this generation, along with generations to come. And I just wanted to touch on uh, the creation of this, um, the purpose for why it was created. One of the biggest uh, issues for a lot of Indigenous peoples, especially from the Thunder Bay District, I believe is the acquisition of proper housing or even and homelessness as well specifically in our Anishinaabe youth. We see that when you have children coming in from like a community of 400 people to a community that's well over 110,000 in population. And when you arrive there to such a place, it does create a culture shock. And oftentimes we do, these youth do come in and they are questioning, where can I possibly get this? Where can I get that? Where can I get a social insurance number? Where can I get options about getting acquiring ID? Where can I get this? Where can I get that? So this guide serves as a purpose, as a guide for these individuals, for those who may be a little bit lost, for those who are still trying to figure out and want to pursue that, whether they're coming in for secondary school, whether they're coming in for post-secondary education. It is my, it's my hope that this guy can help, uh, help reduce time management skills, can help with, you know, this easy tasks that may be, you know, new to them, but they can slowly develop skills to survive and, you know, and come into society and, and flourish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
no, that's uh, I won't touch too much more on that. Uh, that's that's about all I have. So thank you much for listening. Thank you. We're gonna finish with a song. And we're gonna finish with a song today as well. Uh, Tiffany has been kind enough to let me sing with her today. Um, she told me to sing kind of quiet, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna sing the wildflower song. It's a song about bringing back our children and calling them to us and coming to coming home. So I thought it'd be really fitting. It was also part of our TikTok. Mm -hmm. Chimaguesh, we'll maybe handle, hand it off now to uh, Maria to speak to what happened in Managua with Bifi. Thanks, John. Eh, gracias. Eh, ahora vamos a continuar Giovanni. A como les comentaba anteriormente, Giovanni era el coordinador del proyecto, por lo menos de esta segunda fase del Bifi Managua. Así que él va a comentar cómo fue todo el proceso de la guía y cómo terminó este proceso en la creación de un mural, este, el mural que dice No Más Violencia, y también terminó con la creación de un video de rap que se la estaremos presentando una vez que termine Giovanni. 
to jeho ponďovaní. del grupo. Aquí hay muchos chicos, o aquí le llamamos foco, son grupos de jóvenes que están en consumo. Se decidió trabajar con el grupo del Güembe por estos chicos que son consumidores de pegamento. La pega es, es el, una de las drogas más volátil a nivel mundial y que te destruye fácilmente. Eh, pero estos chicos estaban eh, en consumo y realizando trabajo informal. Eh, venden chicle, venden golosinas, eh, productos diana, pero su mayor este, fue, eh, énfasis es la artesanía a través de las palmitas de coco. Ellos hacen flores, corazones, sombreros y eh, visitan bares y lugares de centros nocturnos. Esa es su manera de sobrevivir y en, en, en combinado con el consumo de sustancias. Durante tres años se quedaron este, este, de libre libre que acompañaran este proceso. Y es ahí donde era Juan Carlos Urquina. Este chico de la situación y se invita a el proceso de la forma para que fuera facilitador. Este es un cambio de experiencia. Hicimos eh, actividades con distintos grupos para que, que con qué grupo nos íbamos a quedar y con cuál íbamos a trabajar. Entonces se decidió esperar al grupo del mercado Roberto Puente. Estuvo haciendo eh, en los meses siguientes se creó una guía, una guía que, no, que, servía, que no servía para poder hacer actividades en conjunto con estos chicos, con estas chicas. Eh, eh, se creó con el apoyo de estos jóvenes y otros jóvenes que integramos la canción este, Vivencia. Se creó una letra, se estuvo trabajando en ella y al final este, los mismos chicos pusieron, le pusieron el nombre de vivencia, la cual se, se logró producir a través de, de un medio de audio. Posterior, este, se realizó un festival artístico con este grupo. Ya eh, cerrando el año se creó un festival artístico donde se presentó una obra de teatro con 10 jóvenes eh, consumidores inagantes de pegamento y otros 10 chicos que no eran consumidores, pero que sí aportaron en, la, en, la, en el proceso, se unificó y se creó una obra de teatro, una obra de teatro, y en ese mismo momento también se compartió, se presentó la metodología con otras organizaciones que trabajan en eh, la eh, en el siguiente año, en el siguiente año, este, el proyecto tuvo un año, pues, este, porque eh, el coordinador, pues, tuvo que salir de los personales, Juan Carrasco estaba haciendo un número de trabajo y hay que ver la espalda de esa parte. Entonces, este, ya decidieron que 
yo llevara a cabo esta, este trabajo, que llevara a cabo este proyecto de hoy una joven de la ambiente del trabajo de calle y de la vida de la que a estos chicos, a estas chicas, todos los que eran niños. Entonces, dijeron una buena aceptación, entonces, este, lo primero que, que me preguntaron que debía de hacer, entonces yo solicité la formación de promotores. Chicos y chicas que han estado dentro del programa residencial de Casa Alianza, venir, mostrar toda la guía, prepararlo para que fuéramos a, a, al campo a hacer estas actividades con los chicos que estaban en, en, en situaciones de consumo. Entonces se seleccionaron a dos chicas, a dos chicos que me acompañaron en, 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 como en, cuatro, en tres meses, cuatro meses durante el proceso. Posterior a esto, eh, la realización de visita constante. Estos chicos son inhalantes de pegamento, eh, se les olvida en qué día están, en qué fecha están, cuándo hay actividades. Entonces las visitas constantes permite de, 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 de estar recordando a ellos de que vamos a estar aquí, de que vamos a estar con ellos y que estaremos haciendo todo este actividad con ellos. Una vez que estamos haciendo nuestra visita constante, empezamos también a hacer este año de la institución de la policía para poder trabajar. Desafortunadamente, eh, los chicos no han tenido el tratamiento, están apartados, son muchas instituciones que no han tenido de población, porque no hubo mucha apertura de las instituciones. Para poder captar la atención y hacer un enganche con estos chicos, eh, nuestra estrategia, eh, mi estrategia, fueron dos cosas. Una, mi diálogo. Dos, eh, eh, la parte de deporte. La parte del deporte, ellos, aunque estén consumidos, juegan fútbol, les encanta jugar fútbol, juegan descalzo a mediodía, a las 11 del día de la mañana, donde el sol está quemando, a esa hora ellos juegan. Y llevarles un balón este, era muy gratificante. Entonces esa fue mi manera de, de engancharme con ellos. Entonces ya hacía mis visitas martes, miércoles, jueves, y ellos ya sabían que estaban conmigo. Yo pasaba un tiempo de, 10 de, la de 9 de la mañana a 12 del día compartiendo con ellos. Una vez que se creó el hábito y, y de que Casa Nianza, Nicaragua, llegaba a visitarlo, llegaba a compartir con ellos, se empezó a hacer una selección de quiénes eran los chicos idóneos que cumplían con el perfil, con el rango de edad que queríamos trabajar por lo que se decidió trabajar con 17 jóvenes, entre ellos dos adolescentes. Dos adolescentes y gracias a la coordinación con una institución, eh, gracias a la, a la coordinación con algunos comedores, nos prestaban el local para hacer las actividades y para luego compartir un, un, un pequeño almuerzo. Entonces, este la variación de aquí se ha creado en el año este, durante ese tiempo empezamos a poner un poquito más duro más duro o más exigente que solicitamos todas las actividades que hacíamos tenía que estar sin consumo de sustancia es decir ya no tenía que llevar pega, no tenía que llevar ningún tipo de... de, 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 de
participación de estos chicos eh, en todas las actividades sin consumo sin consumo tuvimos un mes haciendo actividades deportivas permitiendo el consumo para que ellos pu pudieran tener esa, ese enlace con nosotros pero cuando echamos a andar la guía prohibimos el consumo y todos cumplían nuestras actividades como lo decía aparte de, de cuando ya echamos a andar la guía era de 9 de la mañana a 12 del día. Hora y media haciendo actividades de la guía, dinámica, eh, juegos lúdicos y posterior nos íbamos a jugar fútbol. Otro es que eh, estos chicos eran bastante competitivos y no podían participar en actividades eh, de No se que
inscripciones, pues se logró la, la creación de, de, dos, de dos trajes, de dos este, trajes de fútbol que se lo dio una institución y por eso ellos ahora se miran con un equipo, porque son un equipo de fútbol y tienen su traje de, de fútbol y están participando ahora de manera activa pues, este, en algunas charlas con otras instituciones y nosotros seguimos brindando el seguimiento. Eso es lo que, lo que logramos con estos chicos. Y pues, este, si tienen preguntas, María. Ok, perfecto. Ahora vamos a pasar al video. So we're going to show the video Vivencias, uh, which was one of the products. Uno de los productos que hicimos eh, con este grupo de chavalos que teníamos. Y posteriormente vamos a hacer preguntas y respuestas al final. Hey Maria, it seems like the sound is maybe is not coming through. Uh, not sure if that's something on our end or yours. Yeah, it's Lindsay, the one playing the video. So. Yeah, it's Lindsay. Oh, okay. Are you able to get sound up, Lindsay? Hi. Yes. Um. Okay, just bear with me one minute. I thought the sound should be good. I did enable my sound, but technology doesn't always work the way you want it to. Let me uh, let me just reshare my screen. Thanks for bearing with me, Juan. Okay. Oh, now? Yeah, great. We can hear it. Para hacer a las masas, desarrollar conciencia Soy aquel que viene de un lugar difusional Pero a pesar de los pesares no la he pasado mal Hay que dar amor en nuestra vivencia Para hacer a las masas, desarrollar conciencia Soy aquel que viene de un lugar difusional Pero a pesar de los pesares no la he pasado mal Pero no todos tenemos la misma suerte Dice aquel ciudadano que le da lástima verte Camina el cuerpo vivo pero el alma inerte Solo es un drogadicto ya marcado por la muerte También podría ser aquel tipo con nobleza Que quiere sacar la adicción de su cabeza Aquel tipo inseguro que quiere redimirse Quiere liberar su espíritu antes de morirse Y por supuesto que se puede no te rinda Ama a ti ponte a creer que esta vida es linda Solamente hay que vivirla con su ida y Venida, vos toma tu decisión y que el de arriba te bendiga Yo por mi parte aquí te dejo la clave Solo hay que levantarse después de cada encabe Para salir de ese mundo tenés que poner empeño Solo vos podés cumplir cada uno de tus sueños Hay que dar amor en nuestra vivencia Para hacer a las masas desarrollar conciencia Soy aquel que viene de un lugar disfuncional Pero a pesar de los pesares no la he pasado mal Hay que dar amor en nuestra vivencia Para hacer a las masas desarrollar conciencia Soy aquel que viene de un lugar disfuncional Pero a pesar de los pesares no la he pasado mal Era un joven bondadoso, amable, cariñoso Un chico estudioso, con todo respetuoso Pero se sentía solo, triste y abandonado En la calle pensó encontrar lo que había anhelado Un cambio inesperado, un camino no deseado Un ser malhumorado, con destino equivocado Nada dio resultado, de todo había probado Alegría ficticia es lo que había comprado Fue por curiosidad, quería cambiar su realidad Por tanto que buscaba, solo tristezas encontraba No entendía nada, solo sentía dolor Y consigo se llevaba todo a su alrededor No entendía que lo que hacía estaba mal Y el alcohol y otras drogas mataron a su carnal Era un chico con miopía y no pudo apreciar Que lo que consumía para él era fatal para él era fatal. Para él era fatal. Hay que dar amor 
en nuestra vivencia para hacer a las masas desarrollar conciencia. Soy aquel que viene de un lugar disfuncional, pero a pesar de los pesares no la he pasado mal. Hay que dar amor en nuestra vivencia para hacer a las masas desarrollar conciencia. Vengo a cambiar mi mundo, mi realidad, para poder reír con felicidad. Ya, yeah. este fue el hombre clan. La conciencia. So, Sean, uh, do you want to? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so thanks, thanks so much, Maria and Giovanni. That was a great description uh, of of the incredible work that that happened in in Managua. Um, engagement, the, the theater piece, and then the graffiti art, and then this this video, which is just incredible um and it's just it's been it's been such an amazing journey to be on the end of skype calls and phone calls and tracking and following and engaging on this the work that's happened in thunder bay and the work that's happened in managua and you know ultimately what we hope will come of all of this is that um we will through bi fi and this continuing forward as well is have a model or a way of working with young people who've experienced homelessness and other forms of marginalization that many organizations around the world could pick up uh, in many different places as, as a good way of working with young people, a good structure and uh, a tool that young people can use um, to help them move their lives forward and have resources to share with others to inspire um, and and be uh, share some positive and hopeful messages. So, so this has really been a great journey. It's not over. We are we are moving forward in in Toronto uh, with some more BiFi projects, and we're going to look to keep expanding. But um, maybe we'll stop here with our presentations. We've got uh, about 14 or so minutes left, um, and it would be great to hear from. Uh, the people who've attended this event and uh, just if you want to throw questions into the chat or um, or just uh, unmute yourself and and ask your question uh, feel free to ask any questions of the Hopsi North team the South team we will sort out translating as best we can and and are of us centrally here um, we're happy to address any questions. I should say too, while people are thinking, I shared uh, web links so you can find all of this stuff, everything we're talking about here um, on the websites that I shared just now, where you can you can check out the resources and share it. It's This is all about passing this along. So if you want to pass it out through your networks, the, the BiFi South Guide, the North Guide, the, the link to the video, um, you, can, you can pass it along. Great, and I think we have one question from the audience. Hi, this is Meredith from Covenant House in New York City. Thank you so much for this, these great presentations. I was curious for either the group in Thunder Bay or in Managua, if you could share a little bit about how the youth experienced being involved and in their perspective in these projects and a little bit about um, that. and their feedback or comments after being having gone through the project. Hi, so this is uh, Hopsi North. So our youth, um, they did present saying that they had enjoyed, they liked their artwork, the final project. Um, there was some, like they have other plans that they want to do with the Bi-Fi with like selling t-shirts and getting it out there. But due to COVID, we were unable to do those group experiences, which um, kind of contributed to some of their experiences, but they did overall enjoy it. Um, I spoke with Skylar a couple weeks ago. He was part of our media release. He did a TikTok with us on our 
Popsy North TikTok debut. Um, and he did enjoy it and he was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately he was unable to make it. But our, um, our youth did enjoy their project and their artwork is wonderful. Um, and we hope that once we get the actual copy of the guide and we can start opening up things that our youth would be able to get together and promote the Wi-Fi manual after once we get out of um, this crazy lockdown. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so so Giovanni or Maria, I don't know if you wanted to speak to the the South experience. Lillian can try to uh, to try to translate as we go. Okay, perfect. So voy a dejar que Giovanni conteste esta pregunta. La pregunta yo era de Meredith. Ella pregunta que cuáles fueron las impresiones de los de la juventud o de los adolescentes al participar en este proyecto. All right, so I don't know if there are other questions from, from, uh, from the audience. I guess one question that I that I always like to ask is, and I know that you've shared lots of thoughts, Sean, about this project, but you know, what are the things that you want the audience to take away from this project and from what they've seen here? You know, maybe one or two sort of key key takeaway messages from or Sean or Marty or anyone who's been involved. What would you like people to know about this kind of work? Um, well, I can start, and then then uh, anyone else can jump in. Um, so I guess, I guess a, a takeaway for us, this was a learning for us. Um, we, we were doing fairly traditional peer support with drop-ins and different things uh, in our intervention work here in, in Toronto. And uh, Marty and others came to us saying that they wanted something different, something where something was built, some skills were learned. At the end, there's something to show. Um, and, and really doing something productive in that way and engaging and learn leadership skills. And, so ultimately, our hope is that we've got a set of values and practices here that are captured in, in the materials that I sent um, and on our website. And, and what our hope is, is that this could be taken up very, very broadly in many different places uh, as, a, as a way of engaging young people where, um, where there is this opportunity for growth. And we have seen, you know, we have seen these benefits. Um, we've seen benefits in, in Thunder Bay with the young people that took part there how it was a chance to, to grow in many different ways uh, in Managua as well and then and in Toronto too. So I think that's the main thing. In this field of, of working with young people who've experienced homelessness, there's, there's not a lot on models that we know seem to be translatable and work well in different settings. And that's what we want to share and hopefully ultimately get taken up in many different places. So I don't know if Marty or any other, anyone else would like to expand, that'd be great. speak to that really briefly and then hand it to our north and south. Um, as Sean was saying, uh, it's really important to for folks to participate in other ways. So we often get used to this really traditional research intervention um, and it's not as much fun for the young people and it's not only about fun, it's about collective impact, it's about learning it's about building skills that will actually help them outside of the research. Um, research shouldn't just be about getting research done. It should be about developing solutions that can be implemented, learned, and passed on to others. Um, By Youth for Youth is a chance to do this in the youth homelessness sector. Um, and it's a practice that's used in a lot of other sectors. We often see it with volunteering, for instance. Uh, it's not the same context for us here. And it's important to take that into account um, that these young people also deserve to learn and have these opportunities uh, to pay it forward, to level up <laughs> and to try something new. Uh, so I'll give it to the North and South team if they'd like to add. For us here in the North, we want um, people to take away 
that we want to empower our youth to take back our culture, to bring back the things that were lost. Um, we allow through the art to connect with our cultural wellness, to connect with the land, to take back those teachings that were taken away. And it gives the youth their power back. Well, the youth that we worked with, some of them lived within the child welfare system their entire lives, which um, although we run from an Anishinaabe lens, it hasn't always been that way. So we wanted our youth to find their way and find their identity back through their culture. And um, that's what we want people to take away from our North by five manual. Okay, so Harold's gonna share like the takeaway message. Bien, buenos días. Con respecto a los promotores, sí. Sí, por Eh, con respecto a los promotores, ellos sentían mucho orgullo retribuir lo que nosotros aquí le enseñamos a otros chicos que experimentaban un, una situación de consumo muy distinta a la que ellos hicieron. Yo, en mi opinión personal, este, es creer, creer. Creo que estos chicos tienen mucho potencial y muchas habilidades, destrezas para la vida que no han sabido eh, eh, explotarla porque han tenido gracias Leo. Great, thanks so much. Now I, I think that the, the last point made just now is so important is there are so many stigmatizing and and, and uh, discriminating assumptions and ideas about young people who have experienced homelessness that um, you know really fundamentally you can see here and in, in past projects where if you give um, opportunity some enablement uh, some support is just what comes of it is is really incredible and shows people's potential. Amazing. And um, Sean and Marty and the rest of the team, can you just remind folks where they can kind of keep up to date with new work that comes out from HOPC? I know that there's a, that, you know, you're wanting to scale this out globally. So how can people kind of keep up to date with the work that you're doing? Yeah, so we, we've got the HOPC website. I shared some of the sublinks on uh, the BiFi website so people can track things there. Um, we are going to be a couple of a couple of ways. We are in the shorter term. We're expanding uh, to run some bi fi projects out of Toronto with racialized and new newcomer youth. Um, we are the bi fi uh, the hop C we've got hop C happening uh, again in Toronto. So we'll be able to do some more work there. But ultimately, we're going to be looking for funding and collaborate collaborators to uh, to scale out this model further. Um, we're talking with uh, Maria and Managua about opportunities to um, to share with other organizations to extend uh, the work there. And we're going to be as as the the North team mentioned as well. Um, once we get clear of the pandemic and things get a bit more open, is we're going to look at how we can get the the guide out. Really nice job. Uh, up to northern oh. community. Oh, it. Great. But yeah, fun. To, the the short answer is our website will be kept up to date. We will share these resources, and as I mentioned, I, I do hope you can share it if you're working in the sector. Um, and we've got, uh, th there's a guide in the general hop C site on how to do this stuff is please, this is, um, you know, as they said many years ago, steal this book, uh, here, we want people take these ideas, uh, you know, be inspired, share it, try it out. And, and I hope that, uh, some young people you engage can maybe benefit similarly. Wonderful. Thank you so much to Sean and Marty Hopsy North and, and in Nicaragua. Thank you so much for everyone uh, for joining us here today and for all of the audience. This was recorded, so we'll send out the recording to everyone who registered so you can uh, look back and, and share it with your networks if you'd like. Um, and as Sean mentioned, stay up to date with this project on the Homeless Hub. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much and wishing everyone a wonderful day. Thank you, Miigwech, and muchas gracias. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Gracias. Gracias a todos.
ਭਾਰਾ 